everyone, Paul I Sam, welcome to part 4 of our Tamiya 124 Porsche 911 GT3 video build. we got final assembly today. All the hard work really is out of the way. We've got some boring, monotonous tasks today that are going to take forever to do, but are some of the most important steps of the modern. So we've got to flat all the dust spots, polish them all to high shine. We've got to mask off all the windows. There's no mask set with the kit, that's going to be a nightmare. And we're going to mask off and spray all the window rubbers as well. So a lot of very boring jobs. They're not the most interesting to do. We're at the final hurdle. So it was what drive us to get it done. We've also got the lights to do. Um, some interior parts to add still. Um, so yeah, we've got a few bits and bobs to do. So let's jump straight back in and get cracking with the build. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell notifications, get notified of all our latest videos. Click the like button and leave a comment. I do read and reply to all the comments and appreciate everybody that takes the time to leave a comment on the channel. And of course, if you scroll up in the description, there's a link to a big long list of all the items I use in my videos. So if you see anything, you should be able to find it in there. So straight in and on to our lights. We're going to hand paint all the red and orange using Tamiya LP lacquers, the Winsor Newton detail brush. Now, in hindsight, I wouldn't have painted these fully orange. The constructions call out for it, but on the real car, you can only very faintly see uh, what looks like the orange bulb through the light. So, yeah, I wouldn't have painted these like this, but we have, they're in the car, and it's one of those things. Worthwhile paying attention to real life subjects rather than just instructions. The rear lights are a mixture of red and orange as well, and a bit of careful detail painting um, sees these dealt with pretty quick. Um, just refer to where the reverse light is, make sure you leave that black. Um, we will, of course, also back these in bare metal foil later and add a bit of a smoke effect to the, um, the rear lenses as well. So, some nice careful detail painting, nothing too strenuous. Now, our bodywork, we need to flat this. Now, I'm going to speed up the whole process. We've got some micro mesh. We've got 6,000, 8,000, and 12,000. And then we're coming with the ultimate polish system. And the finish on this is phenomenal at the airbrush already. But we do have a few dust spots in there to take care of. So, we're just going to lightly sand with each grit, work on our way through until we clear um, everything that's a floor, basically. Um, all we've got is several spots of dust. There's no runs, there's no orange peel, nothing. So fairly straightforward to take care of. So we go through with the 6,000, then the 8,000. We're just doing back and forth motions. Keep it wet all the time. We've got to clean water. And just keep checking. And we just want to see this slowly uh, diminish the dust spot. And we're on to the 12,000 now. Keep it wet. Like so. And just keep wiping it down, checking. And if you're not happy that it's gone, repeat. But just remember, it's easy to stop before you go too far and going too far and wrecking everything. So take your time here. I like to flat as much as I possibly can. Then polish, uh, compound and polish. Then if I need to repeat it, I will. This can take a few hours to do. I had about three hours work here in polishing all this up. But I had a phenomenal finish at the end. A nice clean piece of kitchen paper, wipe it down. When you're happy, we can then come in with a compound and start to polish up those fine scratches. So we've got the ultimate polish system, which comprises of a compound for dealing with harsher scratches. We're going to wet it a little bit. It does dry up a little bit. A few people have mentioned this lately. It does dry up a little bit in the pot. So just put a little bit of water in there, wet your cloth, Pop it in, get a bit on the cloth. You don't want a huge amount, so wipe most of it off. And then we're going to use this first. Um, the other part of our polish system um, is a polish. We've then got a wax and a detail spray as well. So use the compound first to remove all the heavier scratches. And then come with the polish later to remove all the finer scratches. And hopefully get you to a nice high shine. Now that will obviously vary on the clear coat you're using. If you're using an acrylic based one, uh, it's going to take a lot more work, or just a standard lacquer based one, it's going to take a lot more work. And they also take a lot longer to dry. Uh, the 2K I'm using here dries ultra hard. This has been left now for ooh, 10 days or so, so it's well and truly cured. 
Um, so I'm confident that I can polish it up to a nice high shine. Once you're happy that you're all compounded, go around with another clean cloth. Have one cloth for putting it on, one cloth for taking it off, and remove it all. Have a look. If you've still got deep scratches, hit it again with the compound. If you've still got dust spot showing, go back to the um, wet and dry micro mesh. And if you're happy at this stage that you've just got some fine scratches left, you can come with the polish for that final step um, of getting it all polished up. So I'm just having a little look around, looking for any flaws in the paint, thinking what can we do to rectify it. And that's it. Like I say, long drawn out process. About three hours this one took me, uh, but trying to get as good as I possibly could. So the polish, again, somebody mentioned, does it separate? It does. Um, all these kind of products do separate when left standing for a while. So give it a real good shake up, or if you want to, give it a real good mix with a um, mixing spoon or a, a cocktail stick. Really simple. Wet the cloth again. A little bit too much on this. Not a problem though. We can just put it on where we want it and then spread it around to the roof and adjacent areas as required. So again, we're just using the polish on the cloth. A little bit of pressure, not a huge amount. What we don't want to do is burn through the paint. Very, very easy to do with either wet and dry, the compound or the polish. So just take your time. And all we're trying to do is get this to a nice high shine. And again, once we wipe this off, you need to repeat the polish or go back a step to the compound, or if you think it needs it, go back a step to the micro mesh. So it's a fine, a fine line, step by step, seeing how you go until you're happy with the finish that you get. But the beauty of 2K, like I say, is it dries fast, it dries rock hard, and the finish out of the airbrush, in my opinion, is unbeatable than any other clear coat out there. So there we go, we're happy now, we're all uh, polished up. We're going around with a clean cloth and we're just doing a final polish on all the bodywork, get rid of all those remnants of polished, any dust, any residue. Just giving it a real good clean up. And again, making sure we've got all the areas polished up that we required. There's no scratches and all the flaws. Once we're happy, we can let that dry for an hour or so. Then come with our toothbrush. Give all the panel lines a quick scrub over. But as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty much spot on. One final wipe over. And that's looking good. We've got a nice high shine. We've got a nice deep purple colour. I'm so glad I painted this colour. I know a lot of people don't like it, and that's fair enough. It's my choice of colour. It's a newer GT3 colour. So it is a proper Porsche colour. Um, colour is subjective, of course. Uh, what one person might like, another might not. But for me, yeah, I like this colour. I'm glad I chose it. It looks beautiful. And it's a beautiful, deep purple colour. And we've got a fantastic shine there. Now our lights. We've got our bare metal foil um, chrome. I'm just going to cut a little sliver off with our Tamiya craft knife. Use a metal ruler. Very carefully cut off a strip. What we're going to do, we're going to use this to back our light. So we've done this before. So we literally get our light, we cut it to length, peel the back off, pop over the light, burnish it down with a cotton bud, trim it, and that's it. Job done. I think it adds a lot more depth to the lights. I think it adds a bit of realism. What I've also done off camera is we painted the amber and the red using the orange and red Tamiya old peas. Um, on the rear lights it's just red uh, and then it's clear so what I did was I smoked the top lens because on the real car it looks ever so slightly smoked and I used a transparent smoke from Alclad I did record it I sadly lost a little bit of footage but literally it took me long to take the cap off the bottle of Alclad and then to spray the paint it was literally two very very light mist coats you could use the Alclad smoke you could use Tamiya smoke, either X18 or the uh, LP smoke, just to do it. Just to add a little bit of a tint to the light. And it did make a nice difference to it. So we've got the bare metal foil all burnished down. Now we're using a sharp knife edge to lightly just cut the top of this. And all we're doing is just trimming the bare metal foil to the edge of the uh, light. 
like so. If you angle it right and use the knife properly, it'll just cut it off perfectly. You watch now to cut this piece off near enough in one go. Just mind don't cut yourself. Once you're happy about that, we've moved over to paint marker pens now. So these are actual paint pens, and they cover a lot better than the actual Edding marker pen. So this physically puts down a lot more paint. It's literally paint in a pen, and it works absolutely fantastic. I need to update my product list. I will try and update them ASAP for you, but you can find these on eBay. You're looking for Edding 750 and I think it's 751 to do various widths of tip in various colours. I spent about £70 on these recently to get a load of them. I've also got some Molotow Chrome now as well in the refill bottle. So this is a liquid chrome we use in the pens, but this is the refill bottle for the pens, which makes life easier to spray things up. So we add a few drops to our Apex. This is the 02 mil needle. We're about 18 psi. We've already um, sorted the seams on the exhaust. They were chromed from Tamiya. And I was going to strip them using bleach, but once we did dealt with the seams and the sprue markers and what have you, uh, it was easy just to sand the whole thing and remove all the chrome that way. Uh, I then primed it in UMP Black Primer. And we're going to have a couple of coats of the Molotow. Now, I found the trick of using this, I've only used it a couple of times, is to put a little light mist coat, base coat down on it, and then come on in on the second time and really start to layer it up and get it nice and wet Ooh, uh. so as you can see there we've got a nice silver base get enough of it down to get silver and then we come in I'm a little bit off shot unfortunately I do apologize and then we put it down until we get that nice high chrome finish like so don't be afraid of putting a lot on there it does take quite a bit to build it up obviously don't flood it and make it run but you'll see it layer down and once you've got a nice smooth finish um there's both of them done nice and chrome buttons are on side for as long as possible and try and handle them as little as you can so my only gripe with this kit it's a phenomenal kit from tamia is there's no interior mask set for the glass and there's a lot of it to mask up and there's no aftermarket set available either so we've had to make do with our tamia one two and three mil tapes to do this by hand again took about an hour to do a bit fiddly but i did it on a i think it was a live show or hangout wherever it was and it went really fast so it wasn't too bad but it's a case of do all the edges get the corners infill it with the thicker tape and then spray so a bit of a boring job something that could be easily resolved by either tamia supplying the mask or there being an aftermarket one available as you can see we're using the one mil just to get the outer edge it's fiddly, it's very time consuming, but this is a very prominent part on the car. So the time taken here is well spent. We've got our Tamiya decal uh, scissors there as well, and our HG uh, high grade tweezers for placing everything in place. And all I'm doing is I'm lining the edges up and getting the main straight piece on, and then I'm following to the edge, looking to where the curve is. It's too sharp of a curve to get with tape. So all I'm doing is then using the decal scissors to cut the tape right on the point of the corner on an angle and then doing the same the other way. And it's given us a pretty clean curve as such. It's a clear curve in the lightest sense of the word. But like so, we do that, we meet them up and we get a nice curve on the edge. Now we've got the 3mm Tamiya and we're just going up to our line just to get it infilled into the center for a little bit. Again, using our tweezers to get them finally in place. And if you need to trim it, give it a trim, trim with the scissors. And again, we go all around the glass. Like I say, it's boring. This would be so much quicker of a mass set. So if anyone's watching, please make a mass set for this car. Make life a lot easier. There we go, the last piece going in place. Like I say, it is boring, but the time spent here, this is a very, very prominent part of the car. If you, in my opinion, 
if you don't do the window rubbers neat or the windows neat it sticks out like a sore thumb it really does so really take your time we're in film the center now with 18 mil tamia tape just take your time spend a bit more time if you're not happy start again don't accept a poor finish if you can help it i've been guilty of that many many times just take your time get it all infilled trust me it's time well spent Tammy tapes are top top quality as well if you put them down properly you'll get no bleed through at all obviously any proper paint technique as well not hosing the paint on but there we are all masked up ready for paint just a front and side windows to do and we give it a quick coat of UMP primer got two light coats all the way around we've unmasked the majority of the front screen I'm just going to do the very last bit and you can see we've got a nice clean demarcation the UMP black primer looks really good for window rubbers and the actual window surrounds as well using our Tamiya knife and Tamiya tweezers to remove it be very gentle you don't want to scratch that glass and try and handle it as little as possible because the less you've got to clean it up the less chance you've got to put scratches on it or marks or smudges um, the tape can leave the odd smudge behind as well so I'll show you a little trick in a minute for getting rid of those without leaving any scratches. Which is, use your glasses cleaning cloth to clean the glass afterwards. Now this is a cloth I got off Amazon. Cost me about £3. It was an absolute lifesaver for cleaning glasses. It's a very high quality cloth. The one I had before just used to smudge. This is really good. And for cleaning the glass, the clear plastic parts like this, it's uh, invaluable. It cleans them absolutely spotless. Works really well, and I think I'll buy a dedicated one just for modeling. So that's all our glass unmasked. We've now got the really tedious job of masking up all the rubber window seals. So they go completely around all the windows from front to back and across the roof. So there's a lot to do. Again, very boring and monotonous job. Are a very very prominent feature of the car and for me it's one of the first things that always catches my eye on a model this hasn't been done neatly don't do it by hand it looks awful i'm going to be honest it does it looks awful and don't use a sharpie pen either in my opinion it just doesn't look right at all you need to use a semi-gloss um, or a satin um, black paint so UMP primer is ideal and do it be don't do it before you clear coat do it after um, because it adds that more, little bit more realism because these window rubbers aren't gloss uh, rubber they're either high high satin shine if they've got a product on them or a matte if they've aged a little bit so yeah take time to mask them it's not hard to do it's just a bit boring and tedious once you've got the tamiya tapes like these it makes life a lot easier or the azu tapes they're both absolutely brilliant. Just careful, a bit of time, put some music on, have a chat with some friends, and the time soon flies by. So there's all the one mil tape all the way around. You can see everywhere that needs to be masked off. It is quite a lot. It's a bit of work to do, but this is the hardest part done. Once you've got the initial outline done, you just got to infill it, uh, bring the edges in a bit, and then use the bigger tape and the cling film to bring the rest of it in. But yeah, invaluable tools, the uh, Tamiya HG tweezers and the Tamiya uh, decal scissors. So we've got the 3mm Tamiya mask and tape now. We've decal tacked every little bit of tape that's gone on this car. And we're just going to add this to the 1mm. And all this is, is bringing it as away from the 1mm so we know that we're properly masked. And we get all these thinner areas around the roof and the A, B, well, the A and C pillars um, before we can come in with our cling film and our 10 mil tape to mask off the rest of the car body so we've got some of tesco's or sorry asda's finest cling film you can see it comes in its own pre-made dispenser so we just pull out a section that we want cut it off we'll then fold it in half like so it's like wrapping your sandwiches up flatten it out we'll then get our alpha rotary cutter and cut off some short sections 
that we can use to mask off the car. So it's a great tool, this. Well worth the money. Just literally roll it. What does help is if you make sure the blade's out before you roll it first. There we go. And then we've got our Tamiya terminal tape. Pop off a bit. Detack it. I'm actually detacking it on my hand. Or my forehead. I have a habit of doing it on my forehead as well. It does work. I'm just going to lay it on the line. We've got our Tamiya tapes and our UMP dispenser. So you want half on the cling film, half off, like so. We can then offer it up to the car body. And this will mask one complete side of the car without wasting tons of tape. Then we can repeat this from front to rear, fold the cling film underneath, like so. And there we go. Quick, simple, cheaper masking. Again, smaller piece for the front. So what we'll do on this, because it's curved, we'll just go straight across as close as we can to the tape, and then we'll in, in fill it with other tape in a minute. But always deem tack the tape. Make sure it's in there properly. Make sure you burnish all the edges down. And before you commit to your final bit of paint, go around, burnish everything down, and you shouldn't have any issues with bleed through whatsoever. There we go, a couple of small bits, and we're all good to go. So 18 mil on the roof, cut to size, cut to shape, detacked on the forehead like a lunatic. Pop it in, infill the gap, and we're all good. Again, Tamiya decal scissors are invaluable for this. Keep them clean. If you're using them to cut tape a lot, Wipe them over with some airbrush cleaner on a bit of tissue or a cotton bud. Keep the blades nice and clean. The last pair of these scissors I had for about eight years. Um, they're still going strong, but they did lose a little bit of their edge. They are fantastic quality, as are all the Tamiya tools, which is why I use them. And we're just cutting this to the edge of the tape. Pop it down. Use a little bit of the tape that's left behind to infill that gap. And then one last piece on the edge. And we're all masked and ready for paint. So there we go. That's it all ready to go. A lot of work there. Probably a good hour or so's work. Um, it can be a bit boring, but like I say, put some tunes on, get in a hangar or a Zoom call or stick a video on YouTube and listen to it while you're doing it. Before you know it, you'll be done. Um, and you're ready for paint. So there we go, we're in the booth, we've got our Apex 0 0.35, 25 PSI, and we've got the Ultima Black Primer. I'm just going to apply a couple of coats all the way around. Like I say, we're at 24 PSI, 0.35 Apex. And it's just a case of all the way around, infilling it slowly, until we've got nice coverage. Like I say, does leave a nice satin black finish. So go all the way around. By the time you get back around to the other side, it'll be dry and you can just keep going until you're happy. Only putting light coats down should just dry very, very fast. Works really well. Just make sure you get everywhere covered. This is the only downside to masking. It takes hours to mask. It's painted in a minute or so, and you've got it unmasked in a couple of minutes. But well worth the time spent, because it does make a big difference to the vehicle. There we go. Most of it done. Put that down to five minutes, give it another coat, and we're done. Unmask it all. Take your time. Be careful here. We're going to have some uh, residue off the masking tape to remove. So let the window rubbers dry properly and then come back in with your soft microfiber cloth and buff it all back up again. So you can see a little bit of residue on the roof. So I'm just slowly going around with the cloth, removing that residue. Because we're on a nice polished surface, it does come off really well. 
There we go. The windows look nice and sharp. Happy how they've gone. Just give it all a quick buff up before we move on to our next step. There we go. Final inspection and all the residue is gone. Rear lights. So these were done before, we said with a bare metal foil, a dab of CA glue from Loctite, the perfect pen. Pop it in place, just hold it for a second. Let the CA glue grab it. I'm trying to move more and more away from CA glue on exterior parts, just because I've had problems with getting CA glue where it shouldn't be, a little bit of fogging from it as well. So I think in future builds, we are going to move over to PVA based glues. As you can see, a nice little doll up each side. Grab the light lens, make sure it's the right way around. Pop it in place. Just hold it for a second. Make sure it's in properly. Job done. And while we're on the back, we might as well pop our rear license plate on with our GT3 decal in place. There we go. Little push home. Hold it for a second. Job done. And then our side repeaters, in exactly the same way, backed in bare metal foil. We've got a bit of deluxe materials, glue and glaze. Pop that in there. A little bit tight these are, so just get them in, slide them in from the back to the front. And then that's it, like so, and then just push it in very carefully until it's fully home. Cotton bud, moistener, again, I didn't lick that at all. And just wipe off any excess glue. And then repeat for the other side, and that's those done as well. So, we've got some light clusters to pop inside. There's a little bit of a lens to put in there, but not really worth showing because it took about two seconds to do. And we're going to line these up with the locator points inside and then grab some of our perfect pen CA glue again making sure we are correct on top and we're going to add a few spots of CA glue on the inside hit it with a kicker and that will glue these in nicely you could use UV glue if you wanted like we're going to use on the glass in a bit but the CA glue is already out so it's easier to grab use a cocktail stick Say add a dollop in a few strategic places using our paint pots from UMP Retail. People always ask me why I use them upside down for CA glue, it's just easier to get it off rather than digging down into a pot, it's easier to wipe it off the top. We've got another one there, we've got our deluxe materials kicker. Quick spray in there, grab a micro brush. This is the Rocket Blaster from Deluxe. And some micro brushes from Amazon. These are ideal. So I just load it with the kicker, wipe it off, and then just touch it onto the say glue and it sets it almost instantly. So there's both of those done. We've got the exterior light lens now. So we're going to pop that in place. And the quickest and easiest way I could see of doing this, and the less mess, was to use aqua gloss, the brush, and the capillary action method. So we just load the brush up with some aqua gloss from Alclad. Run it around the edge so the capillary action carry the varnish into the seams. That will dry and will be more than strong enough to hold this light in place. So the capillary action carry it around the lens. It dries rock hard and very neat, quick and easy way of gluing parts like this in place. Once dry, you can wipe off any excess. You can put a little bit of IPA or airbrush cleaner on a cloth and just gently buff away the excess. So the interior lights, I've got gloves on today. Again, so I'm going to start doing now with the glass. Don't want any fingerprints on it because it makes things, well, a bit more difficult to clean up. And as you see, I've got an index, index finger right in the centre of the glass. And I always end up with a fingerprint there that ends up near impossible to move. So we're going to get this lined up. We've got the body on a cloth to save it getting scratched. We've got our UV glue pen, which is linked in the description down below. 
pretty carefully. Don't get any on that finger. This is the five second fix. The clue is in the name. Just saying, Luke. Then we're going to add a dab each side of the windscreen. Hold it down. Put the UV light on. Make sure we get enough in there. Then hit it for the light for five, ten seconds. And then repeat on the other side and the front and the rear. And that's it. I'm going to show the whole process just to show how easy and quick it is. It does work really, really well. And it's a lot cleaner and a lot less messy and risky than CA glue. I have got some of this on the glass and even cured with uh, airbrush, UMP airbrush cleaner soaked cotton bud or cloth. It will come back off. Whereas CA glue, once it's on, you have to polish it out. And it turns into a bit of a palaver. So, like I say, get these on eBay. The link is in the description and the list of all the products I use. They're £2.60. They're an absolute bargain. It works really, really well. And uh, I have a few in my uh, personal stock, shall we say. It's just quick, simple, a lot less messy, and a lot easier to use. So it would be definitely something added permanently to my pool, pool, my tool arsenal. <laughs> Don't have a pool. Wish I did. Mind you, there'd probably be a Japanese whale and trawler there waiting for me. As you see, I'm just picking points where it can't be seen. So we're done each side, top and bottom. Then we'll do the center point, and that's it. Job done. Then we can repeat it on all the other windows. Uh, using strategic points where it can't be seen to be fair it does dry very near clear it just dries with a slight haze to it like a yellowy haze um, so as long as you can't blatantly see it you won't really see it anyway but in my opinion for £2.60 these pens are an absolute bargain and there we go that's it all glued in place we'll repeat that for the other glass and once we're happy we can move on so wing mirrors these have all been painted up when we did the 2k i've masked them up and done the black trim off camera we've applied a little dollop of the uv glue on the glass so we're going to pop that in place make sure it's orientated the right way it's all sitting right and then we're going to grab our pen we'll grab the light or we'll pick it back up because it fell off we'll pop it back on and we use the light to set it in place. And again, so much neater than TA glue. A lot quicker, even though I keep dropping it. It's a lot quicker than PVA based glue. We'll get there in the end. There we go. Well done, Paul. So pop it in place, grab the UV pen, hold it inside the glass because we can go through the clear part. And it is a nice strong joint as well. It really is. Highly worth checking these out. Highly recommended using them. They're very, very cheap. If you don't like it, it's not the end of the world. You get the excess, you can just wipe it off. Like so. If it's already dried, just put a bit of UMP airbrush cleaner on there. And it will whip it off in a second. There we go. We'll repeat it for the other side. Job done. Window wipers, these are handed refer to the instructions and you can kind of figure out which way they go they've got a little dab of uh ca glue on them and we just pop them in place so there's that one then grab a cocktail stick again like i say i am definitely going to start using pva based products on the exterior it's just a lot cleaner and a lot less, a lot less risk of wrecking things if i drop that window wiper now on the glass or on the body it just adds so much work unnecessarily Whereas with PVA base glue, I can just wipe it off. So that's what we're going to do in future. There's the window wipers on. Now I've got this little lower, I guess it's a splitter. I don't know. It's just a bit of trim at the bottom of the bumper. It's got a little groove it sits in. Just checking how it lines up. Actually got the wrong way around there, but I'll figure it out in a minute. So we're going to go with a bit of CA glue. 
just apply a couple of strategic dabs where it's not going to cause any problems. Like so. And then we orientate this the right way. I'm like, oh yeah, I had that the wrong way, way, way before. Pop it in place. You've got to be pretty sure you're going to get this bang on first time or it'll end up in the wrong place. Once you're happy, pop it in, hold it for a second or two. Make sure it's pushed down in the corners. And hey presto, there we go. Rear spoiler, a couple of dabs of uh, the perfect pen. Pop it in place. Again, we're going to ditch using the Seagull and exterior parts for future builds. Only where we really, really have to. There we go. There's the rear spoiler in place. Looking good. We're just going to give all the glass a final wipe over with our clock. Clock? With our cloth. And then we can pop our body on two locating points at the back. They just slot in place. Once they're in, you can push the body all the way forward. A little bit tricky to line up at times. But once you get them there, they do go in. Like I said, a little bit tricky. At least I got this on film because I keep missing this part lately on builds. And then we just push the front. It literally slots in place. And there we go. There's the body on. Our exhausts. Now these are the parts we did in Molotov. You don't want to handle this stuff at all. It really does tend to not really dry ever. So what I've done, I pop them off the back of the cocktail stick. I push them off with tweezers. We've got our decal tweezers inside. Holding them with the sprung action. And then we've got our Sega on the back. Through the hole, make sure it's lined up properly. I'm not too confident it was there, so I had a quick look, but it actually was. There we go, get it in place, make sure it's all straight and angled right. And there we go, we've never had to touch them, and we've got nice chromed exhaust tailpipes. Obviously, they're chromed inside as well, so we've got a little bit of a layer model colour black, straight out the bottle on a micro brush, and we're just gonna pop it the brush into the bottle. This is what you call tactical painting. And just going to very lightly paint the inside of the exhaust just to give it a bit of depth. And there we go. Looking good. Get rid of that high shine from the center. And there we are. That is it all complete. We've just got one thing left to do, but it's looking good. We've got a front plate on, rear plate on. The exhaust looks great. Paintwork on this is phenomenal. Probably one of the best paint jobs I've done. A beautiful high shine finish. A beautiful colour. Nobody likes the colour, but I really, really do. And what a wonderful kit from Tamiya. Absolutely beautiful. With our interior, it's really looking apart. So the last step of the polish system is to shine. Um, you can wax it or shine it. I always tend to prefer to shine it. Um, and it's a case of putting a little bit on your cloth. Don't spray it onto the model. Wipe it on. Wipe it all over. Work your way around the whole body. Let it dry to a haze. Then come back with a clean side or a clean cloth. And a buffer up to a nice high shine. In case you're going around, be careful here. Don't be knocking parts off. Or snagging things with the cloth. It's very easy to do. So just take your time. All you want to do is go a light even coat. With any wax or anything like this. It doesn't need actually buffing into the paint. It just needs wiping over. But yeah the paint finish on this. Is absolutely phenomenal. Very very happy with it. It's come out really really well. And I've got some beautiful pictures of it. In a minute for us to look at as well. So we go wipe it all over and then once you're happy come in with a, either the clean side of the cloth or a brand new cloth and just give it a real nice buff up to a nice high shine like so keep your gloves on and there we go 
Right, some final pictures. Look how beautiful this thing looks. Phenomenal. So, very quick recap. We primed this in a mix of UMP white and grey primer. It was base coated in Gravity Spain Ultraviolet Porsche Purple. Clear coated in Gravity Spain 2K Clear Coat. Um, all through the UMP Apex. We did the interior with the Gravity Spain Focus Up Alcantara set, which was fantastic. Worked really well. Detailed that with some seat belts and a bit of grey flock. The wheels were left in the kit finish because I couldn't replicate any other finish that I was happy with. Uh, they were just given a panel line wash, as was the rest of the body as well. Uh, we've got some Molotow exhausts. Um, got some bare metal foil on the light at the back as well. Uh, it was all polished up using the Micromesh 6, 8, 12,000 grit papers and the ultimate polish system to bring this to a fantastic shine. So this is a fantastic kit from Tamiya. It's not a, it doesn't break the bank either. Uh, it goes together flawlessly. My only gripe is it has no paint mask set for the windows. It's come out fantastic. The color's not everyone's favorite. I've picking that up from around the, you know, the comments on Facebook and what have you. But I really like the color. I think it really suits the car, and it's by far one of the best paint finishes I've had, um, both with the paint color and the 2K and the polish as well. Beautiful kit, highly recommended, really enjoyed this one. And it was a nice, quick, out-of-the-box build, just what I needed before we delve into our next build. Well, as I said, I'm happy with that. That was a great build. I was looking for an out-of-the-box build that would be quick and simple. I think we're working on it for 12 days, and it's done, so it's not too bad. Considering it was video built you know, in four parts as well, because it's a lot of work to edit and get the videos out at the same time. So, yeah, very happy with it. It's a lovely kit from Tamiya. I would highly recommend that kit to anybody. No no flaws with the kit whatsoever, other than the fact that there's no mask set with it. So, that is it. But even then, it wasn't that difficult to mask. It was just bloody boring at the end of the day. Um, but, yeah, love the paint, love the colour. Like I've said several times, I know a lot of people don't like the colour. Um, colour subjective, but I do. I really like that colour. I think it suits the car well. It's off the newer GT3, so, you know, it's potentially could be painted in that colour. Um, but it looked good. It came out really well. And the lessons learned from the Lancia, which we said about last time, of applying the 2K in the older way from more distance, lighter coats, um, not worried about getting that one coat down as quick, taking our time, has paid off. Because the finish out the airbrush was phenomenal. It's polished up into one of my best paint jobs. It looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, the depth and clarity of the 2K is definitely far superior than the Lancia and the Porsche is in there. Pride of place on the shelf that has all the video builds on, which I'm not going to do a second shelf because I'm running out of room. Uh, yeah, it came out really well. The pictures really show how pretty this car is. Uh, it's a good looking car and with this colour on the exterior, it looks really good. The Gravity Focus Upset, they're well worth looking at. I've still got the Maron Cuero leather to do, Ascot Brown leather, charcoal neutral leather, camel tan carpet, which I'm interested in trying, and light cream leather as well. We used anth anthracite grey Alcantara on this one. Um, we also used some flocking as well, proper flocking. And while it was messy, I've been chatting with a few of the guys, including Alan, uh, Alan Parker, who was on our live show with us. Yeah. Hello, Alan. <laughs> he uh, he says he wants to try it and looking at it, it does look better from a distance, it definitely does look better um, but the Revel enamels I got, I'm not too happy with, so I think we'll be looking at the clear Ruti Brex 22 or PVA, I think we're going to have to do a little bit of experimentation here to see what looks the best I do have a spare chassis of a car so maybe we can try that and just try a few different finishes but I think I'll probably invest in some better flock. The flock I've got, uh, I don't mean to slate them, is Hero Boy. And it just looks to have clumped, like it's got damp or whatever. I don't know. I, I can't say. Um, it looks okay, but I think it could be improved with a better flock. So that is the plan. I'm going to find a better one. I know Scale Productions does one, so maybe we'll look at that and we'll get that one instead. That's it. Nothing more to talk about. We've got a very exciting build coming up next, which is our 12 scale skyline. Can't wait to start that. I'm also crapping myself doing it, but it'd be an interesting build. 
Uh, no idea when the first part of that will be up. I've got a review I want to do over the weekend as well. And of course, it's our live show tomorrow night too. There we are. There we are. <laughs> Need a t-shirt, don't I? So there we are. Um, as always, if you've got any comments or questions, pop them down below. Make sure you sub to the channel. Click the bell notification and give us a thumbs up. I do read every single comment. I love reading your comments and your feedback. Can't always reply to you all, but I do try my best from time to time to go back through. The time I sit there replying to all this time, I could spend making more videos. And it can take me two, three hours just to get through 100 comments, and there could be thousands there waiting. So while I would really love to reply to you all, I can't. I'm sorry. I try to reply to the questions when I can, uh, but please don't not give a comment. I, the feedback really pushes me along in the builds. Um, so it's always good to get positive feedback. Um, and occasional negative as well. Pencil sharpeners. Um, your camera angles wrong on eight year old videos. You know, things like that. Very important feedback that you can change. Um, but yeah, please leave a comment or any questions or whatever down below. And I'll try and answer them for you. So excited for the next build. Hope everyone's enjoyed this one. Um, yeah. And if you have, let me know what your... Hmm, let's have a think. What build, what model kit do you really want to build this year that you either own or don't own? What would you like to build this year? Right then, I'm going to crack on with the rest of my day. It's early in the morning. It's only just 10 a.m. So I've got plenty of time left to do whatever I want. I'm going to upload this video and then we're going to dig out the skyline and have a look at making a start of that. Thanks for watching. Appreciate everyone's views and comments. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.